Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What do you know is true without evidence? What are you certain of, right down to your bones, without proof? Back when I was 10 there was a competition for school kids to write a treatment for an episode of Doctor Who, with the best one being developed into an full episode in the next series and the winner receiving a writing credit. I was a huge fan of DW at the time and the competition was actually run through schools, so my teacher made the entire class do it, but I was very excited. I began writing a story about the doctor landing on a planet full of defective Cybermen, whose programming had gone awry and had been left on this asylum planet to rot. The doctor lands there in response to a mysterious distress call from a woman and attempts to find and save her while avoiding the dangerous dysfunctional Cybermen and the looming threat of planetary destruction at the hands of the normal Cybermen. I finished my short treatment and gave it to my teacher to submit. Unfortunately it turned out the competition was very strict about the formatting of submissions and mine was returned because I had used the wrong formatting in some way, it seemed like a weird reason. I was a bit disappointed and that was the end of that. But then, a year or two later, there was an episode of DW called Asylum of the Daleks, which seemed incredibly similar to my story except with Daleks. So incredibly, eerily, similar in fact, that to this day I am absolutely convinced that Stephen Moffat saw my script and came up with a formatting excuse so that he could remove me from the competition. Steal my story, change the bad guys and claim it as his own. I have zero evidence, I don't even still have the treatment I wrote, or any letter from the BBC about my submission, and yet I know in my bones that Stephen Moffat stole his script from 10 year old me. Back when I was 18 I got my first tattoo, the Squaresoft logo on my upper arm. It was 2001 and I was also on my own in a new state. I was and still am a huge RPG fan and it's the height of my geekdom. Well, I sent in a picture of me and my tattoo with a short letter about me and my favorite games to official PlayStation magazine. They published my letter and photo along with the caption we don't know whether to be impressed or frightened. The very next month they started a tattoo of the month section and I am absolutely sure 100% that I either started that or was the story that proved the concept, the test. Unless someone can come from that team's time and tell me I'm not, I'll always believe I was the start of that. My cat is in a constant superposition of having recently eaten and being starved to death. At least, that's how she acts. Also any of my feelings about myself. Can't contradict or disprove those no matter how hard you try. I watched Flight 93 go down. I would never share that in real life because it's fucking grim and no one would believe you, the geography of the reports are off. I saw it clear as day from Kent State's main campus, Ohio. I didn't know what I was seeing other than I remember thinking that plane is way way too low, we had an aviation college so planes were common, and too big and it's jerking around like how a toddler drives a power wheels truck. Continued on to class. You don't want to be late even at a liberal college. One in every three or four people is not capable of critical thinking. And I'm not making some kind of point about politics or anything, I mean those people are literally incapable of taking in information and synthesizing it with other information and coming to their own conclusions. They're basically robots programmed by whatever source is most convincing to them. Gut bacterial imbalance can change a person fundamentally physically, mentally, emotionally. One day they're going to cure some impossibly vexing diseases and conditions when they figure out that it's all connected to what lives in your guts. I'm really, really fucking lucky. But like in a subtle way like if there's a 95% chance I'll get hurt doing something stupid I'll come out unscathed. Sometimes I think there's a guardian angel watching over me making sure I don't kill myself by being an idiot. That Andy Dufresne was guilty in the Shawshank Redemption. It's never actually proven that he didn't kill his wife and her lover. We just have his word and a story made up by an inmate that wanted to be liked by Andy and his friends. 
Also what are the chances that his wife and lover were murdered the same night that Andy was going to kill them himself, before he changed his mind? That one to two generations down the line, our use of technology will lead to extreme mental health issues. My brain feels deep fried from time to time and I haven't seriously started using a smartphone before I was already an adult. That Drogon is kind of brainwashing Daenerys in a song of ice and fire slash a game of thrones. He keeps giving her dreams, and convinced her to burn the masters at Astapor and take the unsullied with fire and blood. The other dragons are freaking put during the scene, but he's perfectly calm. He was also staring her down the night before when she woke from her dream. The Valley Ryan Empire was built for the dragons. The dragons told the men what to do, empowered them with wisdom and magic, and built an empire of flame and lava and obsidian. And the eggs begged the Targaryens to hatch them. It's why they had their dragon dreams. It's why so many Targaryens looked to be reborn as a dragon and were driven mad. Arian Brightflame thought he was a dragon trapped inside a man, and died drinking wildfire. Ares the Mad King wanted to burn them all and be reborn as a dragon. Baylor the Blessed would pray over his dragon egg to make it hatch. They heard a dragon's voice reaching into their thoughts, and some mistook them for their own thoughts. Dany had a miscarriage but wakes to only think of her eggs, and is found crawling toward them. And all of this can be explained logically. But I know in my bones that there's more going on here. A bit more lighthearted than some stuff on here, but I believe that your state of mind, vibe, energy, whatever you want to call it, when preparing food will reflect in the food itself. If you're stressed to hell and make dinner, no matter how well cooked or presentable the food is, there's gonna be bad juju in it and it'll just taste, different. All natural things are a part of a cycle. Everything that has ever existed is natural. Everything is part of a larger cycle. The universe is a cycle. The Big Bang is only a step in that cycle. Something came before. Lack of entropy will not be the end. Something will come after. Nature never makes just one of something. This has all likely happened elsewhere. My phone is listening to me, it's simply not a coincidence anymore how my targeted ads change directly related to and after a conversation. People say we are just more predictable than we think but I mentioned something I haven't even thought about for years and there it is on Instagram. That there is other intelligent life in the universe. We may never encounter it, certainly not within any of our lifetimes, but it's out there somewhere. The universe is too goddamn big for us to be the only ones. That the entire US mattress industry is a front for criminal organizations. Virtually every city has more mattress stores than it needs. When was the last time you bought a mattress? So then why does a city of 80,000 have like 7 separate mattress retail places within like 6 blocks? I know that love is never easy. Being with anyone for any extended period of time is hard and takes work from both partners. It doesn't matter how well you get along, if things are easy, someone is probably not speaking up about something. That gardening is the secret to happiness. Sounds super strange, especially coming from someone like myself, an ex-World of Warcraft gamer. I had kids, got busy with work, wanted out of the suburbs, got some land in the country, and started planting stuff. Years later I have what I call a food forest. I have replaced lawns with fruit trees, bushes, vines, flowers, all woven together to mimic a natural forest, except everything in it is edible. It has changed my life completely. I just think there's something about being outside in the sun, feet on soil, hands in dirt, planting shit watching it grow in the background of your life. Going out and checking on it and watching how much bigger it is getting. Watching life find it, and now you get to live with the natural world, not isolated from it. Birds making nests in your trees, frogs making home in your ponds, seeing bees all around your flowers, butterflies everywhere. 
rabbits and squirrels moving in, then owls moving in to eat those. It's this wonderful trophic cascade that you started, and it's incredibly rewarding. Plus, being able to just walk outside and get chemical-free nutrient-rich dinner is amazing. You can see my food forest in my post history if anyone is interested in seeing what I'm doing. I actually think a big reason depression is such a big thing these days is because we have all become so disconnected from the life that we evolved in for the last 6 million years. We evolved walking around savannas and forests, pulling food off bushes and trees, out in the sun, feet in the soil, hands in the dirt. We couldn't be further from that, living inside our isolated homes, cars, and offices. It's no wonder we're all so depressed. I th Companies pay people to make memes, and not the cringe-worthy hey fellow kids kind we all laugh about. Think about it, everyone likes memes, it's too lucrative to not use as an advertising medium. I genuinely feel the out pizzaing the hut meme may be started by Pizza Hut's PR team. That there is a massive pedo ring regarding a lot of past slash present presidents along with other country leaders and famous people. We will probably never learn the full extent due to their power and the cycle of child trafficking and pedo will continue right under our nose. That on balance people are more good than bad. Now sure, you can argue that that's a meaningless statement, after all, unless you think good and bad are absolute values, the average human is pretty much stuck at zero on that midpoint on the scale. You could even point to all of the shit that human beings have done over the past few thousand years and beyond and that we continue to do to each other now. That said, I've always found that the world is a better, brighter place when you're willing to give people the benefit of the doubt. If you assume people are willing to help you in times of need, you're more willing to help them in times of need so there's an increase in reciprocated good in the world. Whether it's true or not, acting like people are fundamentally good helps to make it so. So yes. I believe it, because I choose to believe it. As lifestyle choices go, I highly recommend it. Most company CEOs don't really know what they're doing. Whether their business thrives or fails has more to do with luck than anything else. There are exceptions, but most of them have a completely warped sense of their own brilliance. Reddit boosts up vote points when it comes to posts they are advertising. Political posts are created by political groups disguised as your average Reddit user posts. To make us think that's the actual narrative of every single person on the planet when it's only the minority. Because they know we are stupid enough to rely on the legitimacy of a post that's thousands of upvotes. Mostly because of the human nature of belonging. The food you eat really affects you more than you'd think. The gut has all this life and if you don't take care of it it won't take care of you. I legit think the rise of depression can be linked to diet significantly. The time crafters. Hear me out, there are tiny entities, I visualize them as humanoid, but you do you, that create and recreate all the things in the world every moment. But sometimes, like you, they get distracted and forget to make something, like, say, your keys. Which you are positive you just had. So you mention your keys and start looking for them in the spot where they are definitely supposed to be. After all, you literally just set them down right here. And the time crafters hear you and panic because they can't just rematerialize your keys in front of you. That would cause them more trouble than it could possibly be worth and expose their whole operation. So they wait on the keys, and when you walk to the other room to make sure you didn't set them down there, they remake them in their proper spot. You come back to where you thought they were, and, lo and behold, there they are. You write it off as your brain or eyes playing tricks, the time crafters wipe the stress sweat from their brow, and everything carries on until the next time they get distracted and the cycle begins again. The time crafters are more likely to make errors when there's lots of clutter, too. Or when they can't anticipate what it is you need. Where is my old binder of Pokemon cards I haven't looked at in 13 years, might take them a longer minute than I always put my sunglasses in this spot on the counter. Oh, 
and some lost things are just an unwitting tithe to the time crafters who watch out for you. Americans were plumped up by the Defense Department beginning in the 1960s in expectation that they would need to survive a post-nuclear holocaust where there would be no food. Factory farming of animals began around this time. Obviously they did it under the guise of good old American capitalism, innovation, fast food, etc., but the path was paved and paid for by the Defense Department in partnership with the Department of Agriculture to store food in silos, raise animals indoors away from nuclear fallout, and develop corn-based preservative-filled foods that would last 10 years on a shelf. Sugar is really, really, really the worst source of problems in our chronic health crisis. And liquid sugar doubly so. Stop drinking that soda, people. It is making you profoundly sick. The same with fruit juices, they are not much better than soda, tons of liquid sugar. Cut your sugar consumption to a quarter, your body will thank you. You do not even have to abstain totally, eat some pie on your kid's birthday, that is okay. But stop the casual everyday consumption. You will quickly become leaner and the threat of having diabetes mellitus second type in the future will likely go away. Sugar, or better said fructose, which forms half of table sugar, acts as a chronic poison, if you keep eating it in large quantities. We are not built to consume a lot of sugar. China knew how bad COVID-19 was yet let the virus spread rather than shut down the entire country. They did this so their economy wouldn't be the only one affected by the virus. Again no proof but they're a communist regime and those don't have a good track record of doing the right thing. Epstein didn't kill himself. I don't believe he survived. I know he died, but I know it wasn't suicide. He had the dirt on Trump, Clinton, Prince Andrew, and God only knows who else and he was going to testify that they were all child rapists who had bought the use of children for sex from him, so somebody made the problem go away. Don't know who or exactly how, but I can't see how it could be anything else. My philosophy is basically this, and this is something that I live by, and I always have, and I always will, don't ever, for any reason, do anything, to anyone, for any reason, ever, no matter what, no matter where, or who, or who you are with, or where you are going, or where you've been, ever, for any reason whatsoever. There's a story our family used to whisper about my grandma that I believe is the gospel truth. We're Native American, Muskogee Creek Nation. Her parents were old-fashioned and believed in arranged marriage. She got married at 15 to this older man, and things were going well for a spell, then he started drinking. And when he'd drink, he'd get abusive. Never bad, but a slap or hair pulling, stuff like that. Then one night he came home blackout drunk and beat the tar out of her. After that he passed out on the sofa. Here's where it gets interesting. The story is, Grandma, at age 16, all 120 pounds of her, took her biggest cast iron skillet and used all her strength and bashed his head in while he slept. Killed him outright. Then she went back to her parents and told her brothers what had happened and four of them came and helped her get rid of the body. I don't know how, nobody ever said, but I'm guessing they buried him in the middle of nowhere. Buried him deep. She went back to her parents and if anyone asked, she said he had run off. Law never came around and he had no family left, so she got away with it. A few years later, she met my grandpa and convinced her parents to let them get married. Her parents were of the opinion she was still a married woman so she had to get a missing persons report on her first husband to satisfy them then she married grandpa and they moved a little ways away. Her brothers who helped her used to tell us kids the story. We never could get grandma to say if it were true, but she never denied it, she would shoo us out and tell us to stop that crazy talk. But I believe. I think she was strong enough. I think she thought to herself, no, I'm not gonna live like this. When my brother, who is now a 41 year old attorney, was 24, he got a 15-year-old girl drunk and fucked her. 
he never said the words, but he was out all night then came home hungover. Then he talked about how cool this girl was, he went online then made a big deal about how it technically wasn't statutory rape unless her parents disapproved. Then he talked about how good younger girls were. He's fucking disgusting. This is one of many reasons why I don't speak to my brother. This is controversial but I'm certain of it. Madeline McKen was killed by her parents. It was probably an accident, there was history of them using sleeping pills or medicine of some description to get their troublesome children to settle down. So they might have overdosed her. But I'm sure it was them and nothing will convince me otherwise. That our phone slash devices are listening to us, even if they say they're not. My wife and I can be talking about something, and seconds later we're seeing ads for those exact things online. This isn't something that's happened once and could have just been a coincidence, it happens regularly. Our grasp of the universe and the current laws of physics we have obtained are simple scratches on the tip of the iceberg and are simply human interpretations of the true complexity of the universe. E.g. exotic matter we do not have the tools to observe but is essentially a component of existence. I am convinced that I have a secret superpower. Now I know that sounds crazy but let me explain. I think my superpower would be bad fucking luck. Because everywhere I go, something bad happens, ranging from someone losing connection during a game with 5G internet to someone falling and dying by a freak accident. The thing that these have in common is my appearance. Before I had arrived, everything was fine. Within seconds of my arrival the aforementioned things occurred. I believe another part of my power is inconvenience. I'm constantly inconvenient. If I need to call someone, they happen to be doing something important. My friend set his ringtone to an offensive thing but only for me and I happened to call during a job interview which ended up making him lose out on the position. Four people I know have died on my birthday, my brother broke his arm on my birthday, my uncle snapped his thumb on my birthday and my father was in a serious car accident on my birthday. I know that is not actual evidence which is why I am convinced that it's true. Hello. I work in digital marketing and I confirm your phone is listening to you. I also confirm you shouldn't care, promise you aren't important enough to do anything other than have an AI bot figure out if you're keen on buying shoes or something. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.